the Greater Centerville Historians, organized in the year 2000. The purpose of the organization is to preserve the history of the Township of Centerville, Cleveland and surrounding area. Gerald O'Neill, Charlie Bauer, Richard Wiegan, and myself, Kathleen Sixel, were the founding members. In 1831, the territory south of Green Bay was sold to the U.S. government by the Native Americans who had title to the land. The consideration was the promise of a reservation in another state. The Township of Centerville was established in 1850. The township had a village called Centerville. The reason for the hamlet's original name of Centerville was, in the days of the Indians, there was a trail along Lake Michigan between Manitowoc and Sheboygan. This heavenly spot was exactly at the halfway mark, so the early white man gave it the name Centerville. In 1849, the village of Centerville was surveyed and laid out in lots and blocks. The village of Centerville was renamed Heika when the postmaster general informed the village leaders that another Centerville was located in the state. When it became time for Centerville to be renamed, a judge in Manitowoc by the name of Albert Schmidt would take kids hiking. The judge said, you can't call a town hiking, so why not make it Heika? Thus, the village of Centerville became Heika. In the early years, Centerville had the vision of becoming a lake port. To encourage ships to dock there, two piers were built into Lake Michigan. Many German immigrants arrived by schooners and the village began to grow. The village had a brick factory, stores, schools, a Lutheran and a Catholic church, mill, saloons, blacksmith shop, and a fire department, and a brewery. When the brewery was built, the settlement began to flourish. But when fire destroyed the brewery, the largest industry, there was no longer a need for the harbor facilities. So ended this chapter of the development of Haika. Two miles west of Haika, another settlement known as St. Wendell began to grow. It had a Catholic church, a general store with a connected dance hall, and a post office was also located in the complex, a funeral parlor, and at one time a motel. With the clearing of the forest, tilling of the land began. This prompted the exporting of lumber and grains. The farmers of Centerville looked forward to the building of a railway since they had a serious problem transporting their products. In 1873, the Milwaukee, Lakeshore and Western Railroad was built between the settlements of Heika and St. Wendell and was named Centerville Station. In 1880, Centerville Station was renamed Cleveland after President Rover Cleveland. Cleveland, at that point in time, owes its growth to the fact that the township of Centerville was a rich farming community and farmers from miles around would bring products to be shipped by rail or ship. The village of Cleveland had several grocery stores, a furniture store, a funeral parlor, several saloons, Lutheran church, hardware stores, several gas stations, newspaper, photographer studio, several car dealerships, cheese factory, several feed mills, livestock yard and lumber yards. The biggest business was the Cleveland Co-op, which offered many types of services. With the feeling of green crops, the farmers began dairy farming. With the abundance of milk, another industry began, cheese and butter making. Local cheese factories dotted the countryside. One-room schools were usually built near the cheese factories, so children would have a ride to school when farmers brought their milk. In 1958, Heika, St. Wendell, and Cleveland incorporated into the village of Cleveland. In 1968, the Cleveland Elementary School was built. The township of Centerville has seen many farming changes, but dairy farming is still the primary vocation. Today, Cleveland is known as the seat of Lakeshore Technical College, which offers an educational alternative to four-year colleges. An ancient proverb states, 
When an old person dies, a library burns to the ground. These words were the inspiration for organizing the Greater Centerville Historians. We hope to preserve as many memories as possible. I don't remember this. I don't probably remember it. I can't remember what she had. Shepard, she played the organ all the time. See, I sat next to him. If someone would say the first name. It's Dummy's wife. Yeah. No, I'm in the meeting. She speaks a great language. He doesn't know. A lady here who is the prime mover of this group. And she's going to give us a little information and uh, introduction and some regulations. Go right ahead, please. Uh, it's April 10th, 2006, and I think it was in the 60 degrees today. Anyways, it was wonderful. I did some yard work. Um, I want to welcome everybody here, and particularly Vern, Carl, and Margaret. How nice to see you, and thank you for coming. And thank all the rest of you also. Um, we're real laid back, but please raise your hand when you have information to uh, share so Jerry can come over to you, otherwise we'll miss so much. And state your full name. Try and use full names when referring to people, because if we use nicknames in a couple of years, nobody will know who that was anymore. And please don't visit because it picks up in the video camera. And the question for the evening is, um, what we, our spring work, what we're doing in the next two weeks? Yeah, your identification or whatever, and your spring works that you plan to do for the next two weeks. I plan to rake the lawn at the, um, the a cottage this week. Okay. And the other lawn is, I got a lawnmower that does a lot of the work. <laughs> so. Oh, okay, very good. And your name again, please? Kathy Sixel. Thank you, Kathy. And we'll move over to this gentleman. You can identify yourself and... Charlie Bauer, I'm from the town of Newton up on Highway C, and I know I got one evergreen tree I want to transplant this spring before it gets too far into the to the season here. Okay. And I suppose get the lawn more ready to go. That should be about it. That should be about it, okay. Dorothy Anderson, and I'm going to have to get somebody to do my lawn work, and it isn't that much. I have a very small lawn. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. And who do you have here, please? I'm Marie Pippert, and I did take three big bags of leaves down already okay. on Sunday. But you I went to church first. You went to church? <laughs> You're a good kid, I'll tell you. You're a good kid. <laughs> and who do you have here playing? Uh, Fred Jacoby. And as far as the yard work is concerned, well, as little as possible. Oh, you're going to delegate, I got a feeling. <laughs> Thank you. And who do you have here, please? I'm Willard Matthias. I've got all my work done. Oh. So I'll have to go up to the cottage and finish that up now. Oh, that's the next thing. Okay. Thank you. And who do you have here, please? I'm Alice Matthias. I'm sort of stumped. I'm working on cupboards. You're working so on cupboards. Spring cleaning on cupboards. Oh. So that's my job. That's your job. Okay, very good. And who do you have here, please? I'm Irene Dine. My lawn is done, so I'll do the flower beds. Okay, clean them all a little bit and get them ready. Yes, sir. Okay. And who do you have here, please? Eugene Moiser. And I got to do some yard work yet, and I got to plant some trees to you. Plant some trees. Okay, very good. And who do you have here, please? Melvin Yeney. And I came through Valor's today, and the thermometer at the bank said 69. Whoa. Wow. Nice place to live, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Any yard work that you plan out, sir? Well, we did some yesterday. Today it was too windy. Oh, okay. Okay. And who do you have here, please? John Wiegand, rural Cleveland. Yes. The <clears throat> lawns are raked. We have we have to replant some grass at this point. Oh, okay. That's, uh, I know what that frost, uh, mm -hmm. or from last year perhaps, some dry weather caused that? As far as losing some uh, of your lawn? We had some work done next to the house. Oh, the okay. Grass oh. disappeared with it. So. Yes, oh, I understand. Okay, who do you have here, please? Kathy Wagner, and I'm at 334 East Washington Avenue in Cleveland. Thank you. And I need to get at my flower bed. I have some crocus blooming and really? some daffodils blooming. 
good. Already, good. and I haven't done a thing about it. <laughs> <laughs> and the lawn. Okay, very good. And who do you have here, please? Uh, Dolores Crass. I'm going to get my son to do that work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to earn his board. He's got to earn his board. Ah, way to run the show away. <laughs> and who do you have here, please? Walter Chris. And I started digging my, or getting my geraniums out from the basement, and I'm going to have to replant them for a spring. Oh, okay. They're starting to sprout out. Starting to go. Okay. You keep them uh, all, all, all winter, winter, huh? Yes. Very good. Thank you. And who do you have here, please? I'm Margaret Stockmeyer, and I try to do a little training. Okay. And the outside work, the kids have to do. The kid, now that's the way to work. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way to go. <laughs> Thank you. And who do you have here, please? Carl Stockmeyer, and I really don't intend to do anything. You don't want to do anything? <laughs> <laughs> You've got the the life of the king, huh? <laughs> you delegate everything. Huh? Very good. And who do you have here, please? Vernon Ornicke. I uh, live in Cheboygan now. I used to live at Newton. Okay. I'm in an apartment, so I don't have any lawn work. Oh, wonderful. But I'll be doing some yard work up at the Lutzi House Farm. Oh, okay. Very good. Well, they appreciate that, too. <clears throat> and my, I, myself, Jerry O'Neill, the videographer, I've got some lawn to replace because I live on a sandy hill, and last year's dry spell just took care of my lawn, so i got to do some replanting here. So this evening we've got some uh, uh, nice information, I guess, that we're going to obtain, and we'll start out with Kathy to lead us into this thing. Well, this evening we will be discussing the Rooster Church, and we are going to start with a little clip that Jerry and... Uh, Charlie did this morning okay. for um, location and so forth. Yeah. And um, I can't tell you anything about the card because I really don't know where these churches were located. And I think the one on the card was St. John Church or was it Ebenezer? That's uh, Salem. Or Salem. Okay. That's Salem. The North, the North Church. Okay. The North Church where the church is today across the road from it. Okay. Does anybody have their card along? Oh, right here. Okay, right there it okay. is. Okay, what we're going to do and what we've done today, just so everybody knows, we've uh, went to your area at the Salem Church and at the St. John's Church, me and my partner, Charlie Bauer, and we did some video of what's there uh, at this time. And we used some old books that had pictures, so we tried to coordinate that together. So that's what you'll see, old pictures and then related to today's conditions as they are now. So we'll go ahead on that. It's about 20 minutes long, so we'll start with that. Okay, we're looking at a book uh, that uh, Mr. Bauer had used, I guess, a little bit, and we had some information out of that. Right ahead, Charney. Yes, and in here there was a picture of the school, but it didn't indicate which church of it belonged to. If it belonged to St. John or if it belonged to Salem Ebenezer. And I want to send the, the book over to the gentleman over there and see if they can determine which building it was. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have a gentleman here who uh, has many years uh, that he's uh, had attended the uh, Ebenezer, Salem Ebenezer Church, I believe, and he'd like to introduce himself and uh, perhaps make some corrections that our us young bucks made wrong here. <laughs> so I'll let you go, sir. Go right ahead. Okay, now what, what would you want, want me to correct first? First, I want your name. Carl Stockmeyer. Carl, good to know you. And where do you live, sir? I live in Cleveland. In Cleveland? Okay. And uh, now the church that you attended, what was the name of that church? That was St. John's. Saint, you used to attend at St. John's? Yeah, well, we did uh, attend St. John's at first until St. John's quit. Okay. Then we went over to Salem's. Okay, all but right. After that, I switched to uh, St. Mark's Church. Okay, all right. And that's in Sheboygan also? Or that's, where, where is it? It's in Town Mosul. Oh, Town Mosul, okay. Yeah. Very good. Okay, you have some corrections that you'd like to make here, and uh, we'll start out with that school that we see seen. And is that at location at St. John's, or is that at Salem? That's Salem. That's Salem. Yeah. Okay. And that school, uh, what was done to that school after a while? That, that's the one that uh, Kiesel bought. That's the one that Kiesel bought. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Were you there the day that he moved it out of there? No. Okay. No, I was... Uh, I was working at Lakeland College at the time. Oh, really? Okay, okay. 
and uh, the U we had a thing with the St. John's Church. We had it facing the wrong way, I believe. Yeah. Now, which way did the doorways go out or front of the church? North. The church was facing side. north. Yeah. Okay. Okay. See, if you look at a picture of Salem and uh, St. John, the churches are about identical. Okay. As far as construction and All right. is concerned. Okay. Can you tell us anything more about the St. John's Church, uh, how it got started or anything that, that, or how many uh, people you had going there? You got some article you'd like to read? We'd appreciate no, that. I just, I just got some, I just got some dates. That'd be here. fine. Where did I get this picture? Oh God! See, this uh, they actually started around 1960. 1960. Yeah, and uh, their their first uh, first parsonage was built in 1962. Well, this is St. Yep. John's. 1960. 19, 19, 19, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, uh, the minister got a ladies' aid going. Okay. And, and then they, if I may ask, who was the minister at that time? Do you know? Reverend Jean Grob, S G R O B. Okay. Then the next minister from 1867 to 69 was Reverend Hillhorst. Okay. From 70 from. Uh, 70 to 79 was Reverend Bletchen. At that time, they voted once that they were going to reunite with Salem. Okay. But uh, the vote was 17 yes and 10 no, but it never happened. It never happened? No. Okay. Who, uh, who put a wrench in the thing? I don't know. I wasn't <laughs> okay. around at that time. Okay. <laughs> and that, <clears throat> at that year, then uh, St. John's built their brick church. Okay, and what was that year one more time, please? 1877. Okay. Then next, next from 1880 to 1886 was Reverend Edward Scheidt. He was one of these real strict fellows. If anybody didn't toe the mark, they got taken over the knee. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, he ruled, huh? He ruled the roost. <laughs> then from 1876 to 1895 was Reverend Henry Schenck. I even remember him. He uh, okay, good. Uh, he was a very nice gentleman. His wife was about six inches taller than he was. <laughs> okay, he was more my size, huh? <laughs> he was. He was really a nice old man. And at that time, then uh, they purchased a new cemetery. That that's the one that's uh, now. Uh, where the church used to be. Okay. Otherwise, they had the other one on the, on the east side. Okay, see, so they had the one way down the road then, yeah. or a quarter mile down yeah. the road. See, that was the, they had, they had built a, a sort of a log building there. Yes, sir. And uh, I can just faintly remember that that, that building was there. And, okay. And of uh, course, that they had built a parsonage before that. Okay. And uh, no, let me see. The new cemetery was purchased in, 19, in 1893. Okay. Then there was Reverend W. Z. Leenkemper. Well, he didn't last so long. He uh, had to resign. Okay. Then from 1900 to 1901, Reverend G. C. Bruckner. Now, you would remember some of these already or not? Not quite. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm get, I'm getting You're getting there. Though. <laughs> I didn't want to push it too far. Uh, <laughs> from, from 1901 to 1907, Reverend R.A. Most. And then from 1907 to 1915, Reverend Quartz. Now, they tell me that uh, in the meantime, they purchased a pipe organ. And uh, okay. when Reverend Most left, then he told them, he says, now I don't know if you'll ever get another minister that can play the organ as good as I can. Mm -hmm. Well, they said, we're getting Reverend Kurtz. He says, he forgot more than I'll ever know. <laughs> 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 he's uh, he's the, uh, the minister that baptized me. Okay. And uh, he could, uh, 
He could direct a hundred person course with the left hand and play the accompaniment with the right. Really? Okay, he knew his stuff. He knew his stuff. Okay. So uh, then from 1915 to 1920, was Reverend Colin Hauser, H-A-U-S-E-R. We, when, when he left, we in, inherited his horse. You inherited the horse? We inherited his horse. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so one day the horse got sick. <laughs> then we called uh, Doc Williams, who was the veterinarian here in Cleveland. And he took, looked at the horse. He says, in, in 30 minutes, that horse is going to lay over and die. And he said, I'm going to stay here to, to prove it. And it was, it was exactly right. In 30 minutes, the horse keeled over and kicked the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they dragged him out of the barn, and he cut him open. He says, I'll tell you what was wrong. Says, the, the net for the uh, intestines were split and the fourth part of the intestines oh. through and cut off circulation. Uh -huh. And uh, that's, what, that's what killed the horse. Oh, so, that's, <coughs> so that was, that was Caleb Hauser. He's, he retired from there to live in Sheboygan. Okay. Then we had from 1920 to 28 is Reverend Alfred Funk. He was a German from, from Germany. From Germany, okay. Oh yes. And at, at that time, they put a basement under the parsonage and put in the furnace. Okay. Then, uh, 29 to 35, we had Reverend H.W. Furnaberg, another German. Okay. He left to serve a large German church in Germany. And then from 35 to 41, we had Reverend Edward P. Nuss. He, uh, he married us. Oh, he married you? Yeah, he... he, he Okay. Tied, the, tied the knot that, that kept us together. Okay, <laughs> that baby was solid. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so before you begin, uh, continue, I'd like to just uh, take a uh, pan over to here. And you, ma'am, we never talked to you this evening yet. No, no, that's quite What right. is your <laughs> name? What is your name? My name is Margaret. Margaret, and I'm going to ask, what was your maiden name? Danny. Danny. D H N E. Okay, and where did you live? Well, we lived. I lived about two miles. A mile north. A mile was it only? That was our place. Okay. We went to the same church and okay. the same school. Same thing, okay. And uh, <clears throat> you saw something in this handsome gentleman that you liked and... Well, he saw me. He saw you. <laughs> 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 okay. And what did you see in her? Well, I thought it was a nice little girl. Sure. <laughs> And how, when did you get married? What year was that? Maybe I'll ask the wife. She knows more about those things, if oh, you don't mind. Oh, he knows too. He does, okay. Yes, okay. We were married in 1936. Okay. And if we lived to, till uh, September 26th, we'll be married 70 years. Really? Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. Very good. And you got married at the St. John's Church? Yes, we right. were married at church. Okay, and can I, do you have any recall of your wedding day a little bit? Well, um, it, it, it started to rain while we were going to go into church. Okay. But my veil was needed some fixing. Okay. And um, so in the meantime, the minister came walking up to church and well, we got it good cells, and you know, uh, it didn't rain while we were at church, mm -hmm. but it, uh, it started to rain in the evening. Okay. And it just poured. Okay. So, <clears throat> at that time we had all garden flowers. We didn't okay. Purchase, except for my bouquets. So you had all garden flowers for your bouquets? Mm -hmm. I had roses. Okay. And I think that the, the girls had chrysanthemums. Okay, very good. So, One more question for you, ma'am. Uh, how many couples stood up for your wedding? Just two. Just two other couples. Yeah. Okay, very good. Very good. And uh, you, sir, uh, I got the tough question for you. <laughs> okay. Uh, your honeymoon. We didn't have any. You didn't have any. <laughs> <laughs> Our honeymoon consisted of staying home and running the farm, and my folks went away. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's no lie. That, that's, actual, that's what happened, huh? Actual fact. Okay. 
Now, I'm going to ask your wife one more question. Did you come from a farm? Yes. So you knew all about how to milk cows and so forth? Sure. Okay. And at that time, when you got married, was there uh, milking machines, or was this sort of by no. hand? No, we milked oh, by no. hand. Oh, no, not really? <laughs> but we didn't have so, so many cows. Hundreds of cows like the F to D. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, very good. And just one final question. How many children did you have? Just one daughter. Just one daughter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. And her name? What, her name what, is? What, what, what was her name? Her name is Gertrude. Gertrude. Okay. Very and her good. last name? Hmm? Her, and last, her name? last name is Free. <laughs> Free? Yeah, she's married to Edward Free. She's married to Edward Free. Okay, Edward. Okay. He lived in Cleveland here also, didn't he? Yeah, we live in the same well, house. They do know, yeah. Okay, wonderful. Okay, he has been at our meetings already too, so that's good. Okay, uh, to continue with what you were reading there, sir. Uh, well, I have one question, Jerry. Yes. When were they confirmed? If they went to the same church, they must have both been confirmed in that church. Sure, right? sure, sure, sure. And what year was that? Do you remember anything like that? I was confirmed in twenty-eight, and you were confirmed in thirty. Thirty. Okay, very good, mm -hmm. very good. And you also said you were baptized there. Was oh, that true? Yes. Well, at, at that time, it was at the home. Oh, at the home? Yeah. Okay. The pastor came to the home. I, 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 was, I was there, but I don't remember. You don't remember? <laughs> 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 I got to ask also, did that church have a, uh, like a balcony in the back where the choir would sit, or was there such a thing? There was a, there was a balcony, but uh, the choir sat up front. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Very good. Well, I'll let you continue with your reading there, sir. Okay. Then in uh, 1941, whatever, was Reverend Nuss. From 1941 to 42, we had a, a student from the, from the mission house, Calvin Stubbe. From 42 to 45, we had Dr. Stubbe. He was, that was, uh, he was uh, minister at the Salem's at that time. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. And in, in 47, we sold the parsonage. Okay. And from 45 to 49, we were served by various students from Mission House Seminary. All right. Whatever we could get. Okay. And then, in 49, 1949, December 28th was the last annual meeting of the congregation. Okay. January the 7th, 1950, the school was sold. That's the schoolhouse that was uh, transformed into a, a residence. Okay. The top story was added, or well, not added, but they put the, they lowered the ceiling and, okay. and they used the, the top floor. Okay, I see what you mean. Yes, sir. Uh, January 11th was a special meeting, um, uh, a final meeting. Almost all members joined Salem Ebenezer individually. Okay. In 1950, January the 8th was the last service. It says most members joining Ebenezer. Okay. And in March 1950, the church was sold and lot added to the cemetery. All money received for property was set aside for perpetual care of the cemetery. I see. Very well. That's a good good thing. Okay, now you can ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got questions on the floor. Anybody would anybody like to give us a question, please? I'll, I got one, Jerry. Just one second then. Okay, we got a gentleman who would like to identify himself. Yeah, Charlie Bauer. Uh, when we were down taping this morning at the St. John Cemetery in that, we kind of know where the church was in that, but we did, had no idea where the parchment was. If you could explain where the where the minister's house was, would be nice because we, we don't know where it is. <laughs> okay, thank you, Charlie. Okay, we got a gentleman here who can answer a couple of questions. Go right ahead, please. This is Carl again. Thank you. The uh, parsonage was right adjacent to the bottom cemetery, the, the brick the brick house there that used to be the parsonage. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the minister always had a. And either drive up the church or walk. Okay, so down the road, you're saying to the east? To the east. To the east. And that brick house, there yeah. was a brick house yeah. for, for the parsonage, and that now is a residence, is that right? Yeah. Okay, right. okay. Very good. Okay, that answers that one. Thank you. Okay, we got a young lady here who would like to ask a question. Go right ahead, please. I'm Irene Nine, and uh, why did they call that the Rooster Church? And uh, in that schoolhouse building on the County F, my sister lived in the 1950s. So when did that church, when was that church taken apart okay. or, or dismantled? All right. 
Thank you. Okay, I need your name one more time, please. Carl again. Thank you, Carl. The uh, church was bought by Leroy Shettle. And uh, in here, in, in the, well, our neighbor said it was in 54, yeah. but I think it was about in 53. Okay. And uh, he took the church down and used all the material. And okay. Uh, the thing is, why it was called a rooster? Yes, sir. That was because in the Bible, uh, Peter denied the Lord three, three times before the rooster crowed. That is why it was it was called a rooster church. Okay. Okay. Very good. That's in the Bible. There's right. That's right. And the uh, the rooster, we sold that before the church was uh, dismantled. Okay. And. Uh, when the steeple came down, the rooster got a little bit banged up. Uh oh. So uh, the man that bought it came around and we offered his money back. He said, Oh no, I want that rooster. So I straightened him out. <laughs> so uh, he, uh, he got the rooster. Okay. Uh, I can tell you a little, little story. Yes, sir. About uh, when they took the steeple down. The, uh, they saw it, the four corner beams and uh, had it blocked so that it couldn't fall over. But it rope way up on top and it roped down and hooked two tractors on it in tandem. Uh, an old farm old tractor back and a, and a heavier M in front. And there was uh, Shettles, uh, Leroy himself was on the and his dad was on the bigger track. So when he started to pull, the, the small tractor lifted up and right over tea kettle. Really? <laughs> my, my dad and I were standing on our front porch and watching that. So he, I never saw a man jump like like, oh. uh, like Leroy jumped. <laughs> so uh, we went over there. Then I went home and got my own tractor and we hooked both of them on. But Long side each other. Okay. Then we turn, got it down. Then we pulled the uh, steeple down. Okay. Then it's when the when the rooster got mashed up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta ask also, as long as you're talking the steeple, uh, you had a bell in that church to call oh, yes. the people to church. Well, there's, there's a, you want to hear the story about the bell? I would love to. <laughs> okay. The uh, the bell we kept for us and we didn't sell that with the church. Okay because we didn't know just what was going to happen to it because on that bill the names of the uh, uh, officers at that time were all inscribed or, or cast, cast into the bill and really? my, my grandfather and my great grandfather their names <coughs> are, are, are still on that bill really so, uh, well, we took it down stored it by by me in the barn, and uh, then I had an uncle in Ohio. His church burned down, so uh, they came out to our place, and he saw the, that we had that bell yet. See, their, their their bell was damaged. Uh -huh. He says, uh, "Do you think we could have that bell?" Well, I says, "Yeah," but I didn't ask anybody. I just says, "You can have the bell." Okay. And uh, when we had the next uh, cemetery association meeting, I, I uh, confessed that I gave that bell away. You gave it away! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where is it going? I said, it's going back into a church. Oh, and everybody was satisfied. Very good. <laughs> and uh, my brother-in-law and I took, took the bell down Kay. to Ohio. All right. And uh, it's, it's up in a, in a tower today. Uh, Really? Yeah. Wonderful. So uh, we still got my grandfather and great grandfather. Uh, his name is on the bell, and it's in a in a church in in, in Ohio. Wonderful, wonderful. So that that's the story of the bell. You did a good deed, sir. Thank you very much. Jerry, I have. Okay, we have a young lady who's got a question she'd like to have answered. Go right ahead, please. Kathy Sixel, and I would like to know so I get this straight. You belong to the church that was located near Packer Inn today. Right. 
Right, and was then that was your home church. And did you ever belong to the one, the other yes. one? Mm -hmm. Okay, then after that one was torn down. Yeah. Yeah. Then you went to the other one. And then when they built the new church, you left and went to Mosul Church, right. to St. Mark's. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. And um, the cemetery, who takes care of the cemetery now? Again. Thank you, Carl. The uh, cemetery, that was run by, by a, a board of directors. I happened to be on that board for 50 years. It was started in 19, around 1950, and uh, I, uh, I sort of turned in my badge at, uh, about four years ago. Okay. Wow. I thought after 50 years that, that somebody else take care of it. You did your and, uh, job. That, that's one is run by the, by the association. Okay. Now, you're saying, is that run by the Rooster Church or Salem Church at this time? No. No? The church has nothing to do with it. Really? We're, we're independent. Okay. So you still have a, a committee or a group that oh, still yes. runs? Yeah. Wow. We have, we have money enough to, uh, to run the thing. Okay. And that means perpetual care, perpetual like you said? Perpetual care. Uh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. We still sell lots. Anybody wants to buy a lot, we can have one for 200 bucks. Okay. Sounds reasonable. Very good. Now, I happened to last spring, I believe it was, the veterans uh, in this Cleveland area had the, a memorial <laughs> there at the cemetery. Yep. Mm -hmm. Is that something that it was a long time thing, or how did that work? Well, as, as long as... Um, That's funny. Oh. Hold it. Okay, we have a question on the floor uh, pertaining to a the cemetery and the veterans from Cleveland uh, stopping there at one of their stops to pay tribute, and this gentleman will identify himself. Go right ahead, please. Melvin Yenish, and uh, I don't know when this was started, but uh, this was always the first cemetery in the morning. On Memorial Day. Okay. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. <coughs> and then they went to St. Casimir's. Okay. After that, and then they visited four more cemeteries. Okay. Is there any chance that there was a lot of veterans in that particular cemetery? That's why you picked it, or was this? No, it was just, just because they had a good turnout all the time. All right. And most of the time there were 50 to yes. 70 people there. And the St. Casimir's is the one that has the most veterans buried there. All right. Very good. Thank you for that information, sir. Okay, we have a lady who raised her hand. She'd like to identify herself. I'm Alice Mathias, and I always was under the impression there were two rooster churches. Am I right? Mm -hmm. what, did they, what happened to the second rooster? If they saved the first one? Okay. Okay, we have a gentleman here who's doing a fine job, and he'd like to identify himself. Go right ahead, please. Carl again. The, uh, the first rooster came down with the uh, steeple. Yes. It was mashed up a little, but uh, the man that bought it beforehand said, I want it. Okay. okay. The second rooster is the one that's on that uh, memorial at Salem Cemetery. Okay. okay. That, that's, that's where the, the two roosters are. Okay, now the rooster always was on top of the steeple, is yeah. that correct? Yes. At the highest point on the church. Right. Okay. Very good. There's there's one other church yet in uh, in Sheboygan County. Okay. That has a rooster on it. Do you happen to know that name of that church or where it's located? Uh, Is that the one in Town Ryan? Yeah. That's, that's Town Ryan. Yeah. Town Ryan. Yeah. Okay. Who? Anybody else know about that one? St. Peter's. <coughs> it is. Okay. Just one moment, please. Would you like to identify yourself, please? Vernon Werniki. Vernon, thank you. <coughs> we have a question pertaining to an, a third rooster. Where is that located? It's on, what did I just see? St. Peter's. Yes, sir. And it's close to Elkhart Lake. I, it's on Highway FF. All right. And I would say north west of Elkhart Lake. All right. Okay. Now that was. I don't know if that was originally a Reformed church or not years ago. Uh, I think that was a Reformed church, yeah. too. Yeah. Okay. Except uh, over the years, the Reformed merged with the Evangelical Church. All right. And then that group merged with the Congregational Church. 
All right. And now, that's the United Church of Christ. You maybe have read in the oh, press. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, United Church of Christ, yes. They are having problems now because the uh, United Church of Christ is a little more liberal. Okay. And uh, the Zion Church in Sheboygan is independent now, and St. Peter's is independent. Okay. Plus some others. All right. What they'll do in the future, that remains to be seen. Okay. Okay, as far as the Reformed religion, we'll call it, uh, they're, they seem to be very strict in their doctrines and their way of doing things. Uh, could you give us a little something there, please? They follow the Bible very closely, apparently, or? Well, the, uh, they used to follow it closer than what they do now. Okay. The original Reformed were, were fairly strict. Okay. But uh, I don't know if I get into that, then I'll be in there for half an hour. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just have another question. Have you ever gone back to your roots? Uh, where, did you come from the area where these reform religion came from and from the Heidelberg area of Germany? Have you ever no. visited that area? No. Okay. But okay. I was confirmed in the old reformed church. All right. See, they, they uh, merged with the evangelical church that happened in 1932. Okay. No, that was after, after World War II. Oh, then uh, 19... Well, that was the, the next, the, the ESCC merged. Oh, was when they merged with the congregation. Yeah, that, that's when they, yeah, when they merged with the congregation. The E&R was before World War II. Oh, yes. Okay, oh, very, yes. very good. Very Gosh. good. <coughs> okay, we got a lady here who would like to ask a question. Go right ahead. Kathy Sixel, and I would like to ask Vern Wernicke where he went to church and where he was confirmed and baptized and so forth, what he can tell us. Okay, thank you. <laughs> we got a gentleman here who I ran across earlier this summer. He was a hard working man pulling a big rope with a big saw attached to it. <laughs> And uh, he'd like to give us name and uh, where he uh, originated from, if you will, and other questions. Go right ahead. Vernon Warnicke. I was born half a mile south of Stock's Dinner Club. Okay. And our family attended Salem Ebenezer. All right. I was baptized and uh, confirmed there. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Carl and Margaret left that church shortly before we did and joined St. Mark's. Okay. That was partly due to the fact that uh, they got too holy for us. <laughs> 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 two of my dad's brothers uh, graduated from uh, Mission House Seminary and two of my brothers did. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uh, church at Newton joined what was called the Eureka Classes out in South Dakota. Okay. The association, it was really an association of churches. Mm -hmm. And there were a few in North Dakota and a few in South Dakota and a few around Bakersfield, California. Okay. So they joined that, that group there. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of those uh, pastors were still pretty strict yet and they put in the uh, monthly church bulletin or paper that they should not allow other pastors in the pulpit or or to preach and uh, my dad says my gosh now they're getting like the Pharisee in the temple they don't want anybody else here anymore okay. and uh, he yeah. says uh, I want no part of that okay and uh, when my uh, two brothers came home then uh, he mentioned that to him and he said dad you were baptized in that church. You were uh, confirmed in that church. You don't. Want, you don't want to leave now. If we can't preach it here, so what? There are a lot of other churches want us to be guest ministers. So, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Dad uh, just uh, couldn't see that. Okay. Okay. Now I have to ask a question. Also, when you went to church, uh, as far as say Sunday school or visited the church, did you ever have to go by walking or by uh, horse and buggy or things like that at all? 
walked it a lot of times, but okay. uh, after a while, then it was a uh, horse and buggy, or otherwise in winter, the horse and cutter. Okay. Too much snow on the road. Okay. Yeah. Now, did they have, <coughs> and anybody can answer this, did they have a livery stable at St. John's or at the Salem Church for the horses when you came to church that they had some protection? Uh, Salem Church did. I don't know about. Yeah, you know, we, we had a big horse barn too. There's you had a horse barn too? Oh, yes. Could you tell us where that location of that horse barn would have been? Directly it's south of the church. It's part There's of it a, is still there. Part of, part of it is still there? Part of it is still there, yes. And it was south of the church? Yeah. It, but it's been sold. Somebody oh. else owns the building. Okay, okay. Now, what's left there is what, a foundation of some kind, or is it... Uh, it's a garage now. Oh, it's a garage. Yeah. <coughs> okay. <coughs> All right. Very good. And uh, at... Now, was that at St. John's, right? That was St. John's. Okay, at Salem, anybody know if they had a livery stable for horses or something like that? Yeah, a pretty good sized one. Where was that located? Anybody know? Behind the church. West. The, to the west of the to church. To the west yeah. of the church. Yeah. Okay. All right. I have a question. Okay, I'll be right there, Kathy. A uh, young lady would like to ask a question. Go right ahead, please. Um, Kathy Sixel, and often when we talk about the Rooster Church, it always is like the Rooster Church was affiliated with the Lippas. Is that true? Yeah, that's correct. Um, are are you Lippas? Uh, descendant from yes. Okay. Well, there's Lippas at Lakeland College also, right? There's a Lippa Cemetery. Could be. Well, that would be, uh, There's a that would be Emmanuel. The old, the old cemetery right, north, north of right. and then right. all the names are listed now Emmanuel. because the gravestones were destroyed. Yeah. Okay, can anybody explain the Lippa location? Is that some area in Germany? Is yes. that Okay, could you give us a little well, something there? Yes, I can. The, the, the South Church, uh, guys that went to... Uh, St. John's are mostly from the Lipper. Okay. So from the North Church, are mostly from the Rhineland. All right. And they, they were sometimes known as about a notch higher than, than the Lipper was. Okay. That's, that's why that's why they didn't get along. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. Right, Yeah. Those, really? Uh, there was that those, feeling, uh, huh? Uh, at Salem, they were more holy than the others. Okay. And they let you know. Oh. And uh, the Lippas normally did not smoke and drink, right? Yeah. Well, not any more than anybody else. <laughs> oh, yeah, hardly, hardly at all. So. Oh, no. <laughs> they, that they was were, incorrect. They were not teetotalers. They, oh, okay. They were, okay. All right, very good, very good. Any, any more questions? Uh, I'm sure I'll have a few more shortly here, but if uh, I'll let's see if somebody else will give it a try. Thank you. We got a gentleman here who has a map, and he'd like to ask a question. Yeah, uh, on the Centerville. Oh, Charlie Bauer here. The, this Thank map you. of Centerville here of 1878, it shows a, a F. Stockmeyer that's got the property to where the church was. And I was just wondering if if that was his grandfather, or if that is his great grandfather. Okay. And uh, you can probably take this over there and you can look sure. at it. Okay. I, I know I read someplace that a half acre we came from a Stockmeyer and another half acre came from a different party to start the first church there and down by the East Cemetery. By the East Cemetery. Right, yeah. Okay. Okay, we got a question in pertaining to the land that maybe was donated by uh, this gentleman's relation and he'll kind of clear things up between two names. Go right ahead, please. There were there were stocks and stocks and stocks Myers. Uh, the stocks Myers uh, uh, were actually I think it's only one lady that that went by that name. Okay. The, the others had just a plain stock and stock Myers. <coughs> okay. So the land where the schoolhouse was, yes. that was donated by my grandfather. And what was his full name? Do you have his full name? It was Henry. Henry Stockmeyer. Henry Stockmeyer. Okay, thank you. So that's in the town of Newton. Okay. That's why that's why the church was in Sandler and the school was in Newton. Okay. Oh, that's the reason. Okay, that makes sense. And as far as the again the church property itself, was that donated by your relatives also? Uh, that was that was donated by this Mrs. Stockmeyer. No, just 
what the re relation was there, I don't know. Okay. But well, one was, uh, let me clear that one up again. One was Stock Meyer, yeah. and one was Stocks Meyer. Yes, just, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's very close, I'll tell you. Yeah, it was very close. Why, why they had the extra S, S in there, I don't know, but that's, there's only on one spot that I, that I extra ever found that. Okay. All right. See, I think. I think we still got that old old deed. Oh, place. really? But I'm not going to go looking for it now. No. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if I may ask maybe a little personal question, do you have many relatives that are buried at the St. John's cemeteries, the first one and the newer one? Well, all, uh, all our relatives are are buried on that cemetery. There's some on the, uh, on the old cemetery, the, the yes, east one. Yes, right. That's where my great grandfather is. Okay. The uh, top one, that's where my grandfather and my father and mother are there. All right. Oh, uh, my grandmother, too, for that matter. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as your grandparents, did they come over on a ship or were they here? My, my grandparents came over by ship. They did? Yeah. Okay. My grandfather was, I think, 88 years old when they came. Really? 1848. Holy man. Man alive. That's a tough trip for a person of that age. Yeah. And well, uh, he, would, he came with his, his, his uh, father and, and mother, and there were three, three boys. Okay. There was eight. You said eight years old. Eight years old. Yeah. Oh, eight I years old. I think they understood eighty-eight. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I eight, 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 eight years old. Okay, eight I'm years. sorry. Yeah. I would also like to know those schools that were there. Were they like German schools? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Then they were just used in the summertime. Right. Oh, really? On the day and when uh, we uh, had the Monday Mission after the <laughs> cooked the meal there. Say that again, please. When we have on Mission Peace, they served the meal in the schools. Okay. In the basement. And that was for the youngsters? And, or that was for the co congregation. Oh, for the congregation, okay. Yeah. But they only had the school going in the summer months? Is that right? Yeah, and then... Well, in winter for uh, confirmation classes. Okay, all right. Those days we went out the whole day. The full day? Oh, yeah, forenoon, afternoon. Okay, okay. But now, did the children, did they go to a public school also? And yes. then, oh, sure. oh, they did. Yeah. And then for the summer, they would go to this school. You yeah. for about, was it four weeks or was it six weeks? Well, for about four weeks. That's, four that's weeks. What, that's when they got religion. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Vern, you were going to add something about the school? Our Sunday school picnic was always on the 4th of the July. That was mm -hmm. the end of the uh, Okay. German school in or okay. It was mostly okay. religious instruction. Mostly religious instruction. Okay, very good. And that was for all ages, or like say, first grade to up through eighth sure. grade, or yeah. would that be true? Is that correct? Yes, it is. Uh, okay. Okay, very good. Uh, did you ever teach at all, ma'am? No. Okay. Did you ever do any preaching there, or were you ever a, a deacon or whatever they call? <laughs> No, no. I was, I was a deacon in the in the church, but uh, I didn't do no preaching. Okay, very good. How about Vern? Yeah, Vern, did you ever? That didn't rub off from my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> you have brothers that were uh, they were into the profession then, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Okay, I've got a gentleman here who is uh, smiling and ready to add some information. <laughs> Go right ahead, please. I'm Fred Jacoby. Uh, Margaret mentioned uh, uh, mission festivals, and uh, I hope it's not inappropriate to say, but I think it was a major social uh, thing as well as a religious thing. And my parents always went, and when we were, you know, the younger kids, we went along. And I remember that little schoolhouse was <laughs> like jammed, and around outside too. Mm -hmm. That was a big event. And again, that was held in July. I don't know when the Mission Fest was held, but it was summer. summertime okay. or fall, perhaps. I don't know. Okay. And uh, But it, there were a lot of people there. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you. We've got a gentleman here who would like <coughs> to provide some information. Go right ahead, please. I'm, I'm alert, Matthias. I'm just wondering, 
when you went to summer school, like in the Lutheran religion, we had to, I didn't have to, but my brothers did, had to learn everything, the Ten Commandments in German. And I was just wondering if you did it at that really? time. And, I did. And you had all your German services on Sundays? Yeah. Two, I was just wondering if they had. Okay, we'll check that out. Thank you. Very good. Okay, we had a question on the floor pertaining to teaching or preaching German to the congregation and to the youngsters. And this gentleman said he can uh, give us some information. Go right ahead, please. Well, it was, it was strictly... Could German. I have your name, please? Oh, Vernon Wardeke. Thank you, Vernon. It was strictly German, and uh, we kind of come to the conclusion it was before 1929 that they switched to English German. We get, got a new pastor, and uh, we were getting people in the congregation that could not understand German. Okay. So they decided to switch, and of course there was quite a wrangle that oh, really? for some people to change change that. Yeah. And the reason I remember that is because my parents wanted me to be confirmed before I started high school, and I started high school in 1929. Okay. So it was sometime before then. All right. And uh, well, first was only one English service a month, and uh, okay. <laughs> all of a sudden they had a meeting and somebody brought up that no reason that they couldn't have English every Sunday and it passed and that, okay. that was it. That was it, huh? Okay. And regarding to these mission fests. Yes, sir. There was another Reformed church in Manitowoc. Now, okay. I, I just checked with Kyle and he does not remember and I can't be sure that they had a rooster church, but they always called those the three use rooster churches because they were basically the same Reformed churches. All right. And when one had the mission fest, then the other churches did not have church, so that all the, all the, they all could the come people to that. could come out. Yeah, yes. and it was a morning and afternoon service with a meal at noon and a lunch in the okay. in, in enough time that the farmers could get home the milk. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's right, too. <laughs> and okay. that, that continued for, for quite some time. Okay. Each one had its uh, mission test. All right. All right. Very good. I have a question in regard, and I, Charlie, maybe you have to correct me if I bring this up wrong, that there was, in order for the pastor to get to both churches, I believe at one time your pastor took care of Salem and St. John's, and that they built something for him to live in, like a parsonage, if you will, in Newton. Was that ever a... No. No. When uh, this is Carl again. Yes, sir. When uh, <laughs> Reverend, Reverend Stubbe took care of us, yes. took care of uh, St. John's, then uh, I think we had late church. I think our church started at 11 o'clock. All right. But that only that was only for a year. All right. So he still stayed at at, uh, at Salem's in, in his own house. All right. Okay. He, he just took just took care of our church there, in trim be, between time his son was there and we, that we got students. Okay, all right. Okay, very good, thank you. Myself, I go to St. John St. Peter's Lutheran Church here in Cleveland, and uh, we still have an older German tradition that only men can serve on the uh, committees or uh, as elders or trustees. Is that the same for you people? Not a Okay. Not where we are now. Not the way you are now. No. Okay. But the Newton Church still has only all men, don't they? Oh, yes. Yeah. They oh. still stick the reform. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they still have the old ways in there. <laughs> yep. Women are second class citizens. Isn't that something? Okay. Now, another question. We had an old tradition, I believe, was German also. When uh, We don't do it now either, but at one time men sat on one side of the church and the women on the other. Is that true also? It was once upon a time. It was once upon a time. Were you involved in that? I mean, as far as, was it at your church? I had to sit with my mother and my brother and I had to sit with dad. Oh, really? So you separated the families a little bit, huh? Yep. Well, okay. That's the way it was done. Okay. Is, that's not anymore either, I presume? No. Okay. Very good. Very good. Well, thank you. Okay. Charlie, Charlie asked a whole bunch of questions about himself, and he's got some answers, yes. I guess. Go ahead. I, this is Charlie Bauer, and I was just asking the questions that I noticed in the, on the two churches. They were almost identical in, in size and in shape and in, in 
and even with the same kind of brick and also the school buildings and i was just wondering if if they copied each other or because i know the churches were built only a few years apart and i like to give it back to them. and one other thing we never did settle was the well put there because you had school during the summer and that's the kids that's needed to drink I got a gentleman here who has been presented a question in regard to water and other things. Go right ahead, please. That well was there from, I think, from day one. Really? And that well is only 12 feet deep. <laughs> really? And it's got water in it the year round. You can go there whenever you want to, you can get water right out of it. Wow. Yeah. We are okay. drinking water. And it's, it's, uh, we've, we've never had a test, of course, we never had anybody die from it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to ask a question in regard to the church that you know Charlie was talking about churches and schools now the old churches did they have stained glass windows in them or was it plain glass do you remember no they were not stained glass they, they were, were not clear glass clear glass okay all right I still have a, 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 a materialist of when they built our church I think those big windows cost $24. Oh my God. And I don't know how many window panes are in there. There were quite a few window panes in them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And 100 pounds of nails is a buck. 100 pounds of nails. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thank you. We got a gentleman who has a question in regard to some closing of a church. Go right ahead, please. Uh, I'm Fred Jacoby, and my question is about uh, what the reason was for closing St. John's Reformed Church. Okay. All right. Thank you. We had a question on the floor about the closing of the St. John's Reformed Church. I'm Kathy Sixel, and I would like to know how many parishioners were there uh, in St. John Church. Okay. Approximately. Okay. And the other church, too, was it Salem Ebenezer? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I'll let you identify yourself, please. Carl again. Now, uh, I... I cannot give you the exact figures, but I don't think there are more than about 20 families left. Okay. And there was no no sign of an increase. All and right. And uh, minister's salaries were going up. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were only paying a minister $1,000 a year, and we had quite a time to get that together. Oh, boy. So uh, we just figured we may just as well quit and go to the other church. Mm-hmm. Because there was, uh, as far as we were concerned, no sense in trying to keep both of them going. Okay. Could keep one going. That, and then uh, when uh, when we quit, not all members went to uh, to uh, Salem. There were quite a few that that had married uh, Lutheran girls, and quite a few went to Cleveland Church here. Okay. <clears throat> and those that went to Cleveland Church here, uh, now, don't take this wrong, but none of them had to go through any rigmarole of, 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 of getting re, re, uh, confirmed. re confirmed. Okay. I, I think Reverend Brown was here at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, he said anybody that was a, a good member of, of uh, St. John's was welcome to come to St. Peter's at any time, and uh, there were quite a few that that went there. Okay. Okay, very good. Thank you. <coughs> we got a gentleman here who's smiling. I like that. <laughs> uh, you've got some more information in regard to the church, and I'd like to have your name, please. Okay. One of the reasons that I'm sorry, I, your name, oh, please. Vernon again. <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> One of the reasons that I recall that <clears throat> the uh, Salem didn't go along with the uh, first merger was because the. Uh, Evangelical people had an altar, and the Reformed churches did not. Oh, really? And that was a very, very much of a sticking point. And we okay. had Reverend Stubbe as pastor at that time. He mm -hmm. had been at a church in South South Dakota before. Okay. So he was very much indoctrinated in, in all those uh, rules and regulations, you might say. Mm -hmm. And that was one of, uh, one of the main reasons that they would not go along with that merger. Okay, so St. John's didn't want the altar, or St. John's did? Sa Salem I'm did sorry. not want the altar. Salem did not want the altar. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
And uh, you didn't have an altar in the church either, did you? No. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay, we got a gentleman here who raised his hand. That could mean something, you know, maybe a question or two. Go right ahead. I'm Fred Jacoby, and uh, regarding the, the uh, discussion about the altar, uh, just in recent years I became aware that I think there are still some Reformed churches that uh, the altars are either very simple or no altars, right? No altars. That's, that still exists, I mean, today. That's still, um, that's still um, oh, what do you want to practice, you want to call it? Okay, you can get confirmed over there. I'll get that, thank you. Okay, we've got a gentleman here, there's a question on the floor regarding to altars of today yet. Go right ahead. Uh, Carl again. Thank you, Carl. Uh, as far as I can see, most new churches that are built now do not have an altar. Okay. They have a table. Mm-hmm. A communion table. Yes, sir. But uh, I uh, I have been in some some fairly new Lutheran churches, and they don't have altars either. Okay. I know the new Catholic churches don't have altars. Okay. I I think that one reason is nobody can make them again anymore. <laughs> well, that that's a po a good position. Well, I would think these new these altars, uh, the delicate carving. Yes. That's on them. Yes. Where, where would you get that today? That's right. I think you'd have to have somebody in Europe do it. Okay. Very good. That's good. Anything there, Vern, from you on that one? About the altars at all? Well, I think I think the majority of the Reformed churches uh, did not put an altar in because that was not a requirement of the merger. That okay. either everybody had to get rid of their altars and the Mm -hmm. uh, evangelical church or the reformed people had to put in uh, okay. in altars. All right. So you could pretty much stay the same. And the congregational church was one that not was not governed from above. Each congregation could uh, do, as far as ritual was concerned, what they wanted to do. Okay. It was not not governed from above. All right. Like, say, the Catholic Church. Is yeah, right, today. right. Okay, very good. Uh, as long as we're talking to you also, Vern, uh, do you have relatives that came over from Germany or someplace that you recall or have information on? Uh, we have a very good uh, Wernicke genealogy because uh, one of my dad's uh, sisters-in-law and her daughter uh, did research in, in Europe on it and they had pretty pretty good uh, information before already. Okay. Plus uh, my grandmother was a Rhine King from uh, Town Hermann, south, just south of Lakeland College. Okay. And uh, they also did a, a very good research on the Rhine King family. Okay. And that also came from Germany, I presume? Yeah, they came from uh, an area called Langenholzhausen. Langenholzhausen. Yeah, or long wooden houses. Long wooden houses. Okay, yeah. good. Now, thank you for that. <laughs> and that was uh, in the uh, Russian sector after after World War II. Uh, oh, really? Was it was the Russian sector where they were. Okay. So they had to wait for quite some time before they could get in. Mm -hmm. to that area to research okay. the right Yeah, area. right, right. Okay, I got a question in regard to the German thing. There's like high German, low German. Do you speak German? I can still speak it enough that I can get by. Okay. High or low? <laughs> we spoke only high German. High. Okay. And I cannot tell you who the ones were that spoke low German. But there are so many dialects in Germany and have been over the years that I think actually Low German was a dialect. Like Flatites, right? He used to yeah. call it Flatites, yeah. right? And High German was the official language. Right. I think it is today, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's what they teach in the schools today is the High German. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, I was a code breaker in World War II and we had some Jewish boys that escaped out of Germany, and because they were fluent in German, we got some of those later on 
to join us as code breakers. Okay. And most of it was uh, the old dit dot dit or the Morse code, but they also had uh, German speak in code or in, or in plain language. And they could pick out from what part of Germany those fellows were just, okay. just by the dialect. They'd okay. say, well, he's from such and such, and he's oh. from such and such. Okay. <clears throat> Very good. And uh, Carl and your wife, uh, again, you indicated you had some uh, ancestors that came over. Uh, and what part of Germany was that again, if I didn't ask that before? Uh, near. Huh? Near, isn't it? No. I mean, where the No, that was uh, Lippe Detmold. Lippe Detmold? Lippe Detmold. That's, that, that's really what you're talking about for yeah. the, the Kinders. No, yeah. it is. The uh, stock miners they came from Lippe Detmold. Okay, could you give us. Okay, I'm not totally acquainted with Germany. Can you have any, uh, what do you call it, checkpoints for me? No. <laughs> no. I think it's more in the northern part than so. I would, I would say, yeah, more toward the north central part of the mm -hmm. Okay, I got another question for you. <clears throat> horses, these special horses, are they from? Your area there in Germany, or what? I mean the, the Lipizzans. Yes. You know anything about that? I think about that's the from Austria. Yeah. Oh, that's from Austria. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Very good. I the I know. That's, that's Austria. Okay. When you mentioned Lipper, I thought, well, maybe this is something the connection there. Okay. Very good. Very good. And uh, ma'am, your relatives, what, where did they come from? Do you have something there at all? Okay, very good. Okay, we have another question for the Stockmeyers and Mr. Wernicke. Kathy Sixline, when you talk about an altar, what do you mean an altar that's got all the high stuff on the top yeah. and sometimes the statue of Jesus in between? Yeah. That's, that's right. what you're talking about when you're talking about an altar. Right. Okay, that's what I wanted to have cleared up because I couldn't get this at all. Yeah. And then I have a Richard Wiegand called me today and maybe John, you can help me. On the old cemetery, and that's the oldest part is on the east side. Okay, well, what cemetery are we talking? St. John's. Mm -hmm. Ebenezer, yeah. Ebenezer. That was, that's the one near um, Packer Inn. Yeah, but, okay. Oh, and um, the oldest part is on the east side, and Ernestine Yanning was a vegan. Is that right, John? And she, uh, her stone has incorrect information on Does anybody know anything about this? It says she died in 1890, but it should be, eight, or was it 1890, 1889, it should be 1890, and the, her name is also misspelled, the last name. Anybody familiar with this at all? What's the name? Yanning, Ernestine Yan Yanning, and she was a Wigan. She's, she's buried on the, on the lower cemetery. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that the cemetery right by Packer Inn then? No. 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 Down further. No, I found it because okay. I always wondered why that Mrs. Johnny was, was buried there and her husband is, is uh, buried in a different place. Oh. Really? Yeah, they, they're not buried together. together. Oh. Huh. Well, Richard thought that maybe um, the stone got uh, weathered so bad that somebody replaced the stone, no? Well, it's been that, that way as long as I know, and I know, I've know i known that cemetery for the last 75 okay. years. Okay, <laughs> was, they, they must have just made errors then, huh? Well, I, I don't know, because see, at, at that time, the top cemetery wasn't yet, oh. wasn't developed, but the, the, she was one of the last ones buried on that lower cemetery. Okay. See, for a while, that lower cemetery was only for anybody that was not a, a full member of the church, they could get buried on that lower cemetery. Oh. Yeah. Because they weren't weren't quite fit for the. <laughs> for the <high> <laughs> <laughs> Boy, there were odd customs oh, years ago, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you'd be you'd be surprised the changes we made after we 
if the association took that thing over. Oh, I would say. <laughs> I yeah. never realized that there was anything like that happening years ago. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, years ago, uh, if a, a small child died, that was on the, on the new cemetery, the top cemetery, the, the eastern row, that was offered just for little children. They couldn't get buried with their, their parents. Oh. But we changed that, too. Oh, you did? Okay. You have a lot. You advance to better changes, better yeah. techniques, and so forth. Absolutely. Okay, but, but you're really saying that the youngsters could not be buried with their no. parents. No. Okay. Isn't there a row down at um, Saxon Cemetery too, uh, John, or a section yeah, that's all children? More, mm -hmm. more than one. Okay. More than one row. Okay. And I, if I write, didn't you replace some of the stones there that were so weathered? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to head over by John. I'm not sure how we got to our cemetery. I don't <laughs> we do have an, a number of rows for infants, just okay. like. Okay, like for the, cemetery. the first of all, I need to know what cemetery at we're Saxon talking about. Saxon Cemetery. At Saxon. Okay, yeah. yes, sir. That's right Thomas Centerville. Yes, sir. We have a number of rows that are infants. Really? Just, just infants. Uh, Is that in the older section of the that's cemetery? Down, yeah, that's the older section. That's down toward the road. Yes, sir. The north side. Okay. Uh, that was that way there too for many years. Okay, so that was a German custom I, also. I assume it probably was. Wow, okay. And what is your position with the cemetery again? Uh, I'm the president. You're the president of the yeah. cemetery committee? Yeah. Okay, very uh, good. As yes, long sir. as you've got me on board, I don't know. Yes, sir. In the video before, you showed a blacksmith shop, I believe. Yes, sir. I was going to ask um, Keep going. Mr. Stockmeyer exactly where that is and who ran it. I believe uh, John Yunning, who was, whose mother was a Wigan, was running that blacksmith shop for a long time. If that's the one that's on the picture, I don't know. Okay. Maybe Very Mr. Good. Stockmeyer could clear that up. Good us. question. Good question. Thank you. Got a gentleman here also. He'd like to say a few words in regard to the cemeteries, I believe. Now, when you know, it's on Carl's church because I guess he mentioned once that a Christmas tree started on fire in See. the church. Okay, so, one more time, please. Try that one more time. <laughs> uh, Carl said something years ago about Christmas tree burning in that church and how they got it out. Okay. I don't know if he still remembers it or what, but I oh. would like to ask that. Wonderful question. Thank you very much. Very good. Right ahead, sir. Yes, Carl. As far as I know, it's mostly horseshoeing and sharpening plowshares and any any welding, uh, not not electric welding because it is, or gas welding, just it's the old heat it with a forge and beat it together. Okay, and who was the owner or person that ran that? Uh, I just know a guy by the name of Culp. Culp. Yeah, Culp. Okay. And, uh, there was. See, I think it was Rudy that had the black foot shop in, in, uh, no, in Nordheim. That I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember the blacksmith shop down there at all. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just one moment. Got a gentleman here who, uh, who wants to repeat something. Go ahead. Um, John Wiegand, maybe the blacksmith shop that he's referring to is a different one. I believe the yawning one was probably in Newton's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's oh. a different one than maybe yeah. what he's yes. referring to. I see. Uh, Mr. Yanning's mother was a Wigan. That's why we know about that one. John Yanning, his mother, his name was Wigan. Okay. Uh, he, <clears throat> I believe he died in like 1955. So it, I don't know how long he ran it up until that time. Okay. But for you know, many years, he ran that blacksmith shop in Newton. So okay. it's probably a different one than the yes, video. Yes, so. I would agree. Yes, sir. In, in Newton it was. Yes, sir. I, it was on the corner also, I believe, uh, of that it, intersection. Okay. There. Very good. Pardon. Thank you. Thank you, John. A gentleman here who is going to answer it. Go right ahead. Uh, Carl again. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> uh, Christmas tree started on fire that time that he used to have candles. Yes. And what year was that happening? Oh, my God. <laughs> that was, uh, let me see, who was, who was minister at that time? That could have been during the time when, when Funk was there. Just a rough guess as to... I would say in the, in the early 20s. Okay. 
I'll, I'll, sorry I interrupted, but if you would That's continue right. with the situation. The, uh, the thing started to burn, and uh, one of the men took a stick and was going to beat out the flames. Yes. But she didn't go very far. So Vargas uncle says, give me that stick. He had a stick about oh, 10, 15 feet long, and he started flailing in that tree. I tell you, the ornaments flew, but they got the fire was out. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Was in, and it was a big tree. It was a big tree. Oh, yes. It was a tree about, oh, I'd say 15 feet tall. Okay. Wow. Wow. And that was at the St. John's Church? It was at St. John's Church. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I bet that was, was there people at the, was it a Christmas? Uh, yeah, that thing? was during the Christmas tree, at Christmas Eve. And a, a flame from a candle started it up, huh? Yeah. I wow. Think that some of that tinsel must have started. Oh, my gosh. I know. When uh, when he got uh, got through it, we beaten the tree. There wasn't much uh, left on it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so we we bought all new uh, Christmas tree ornaments, all aluminum. Ah. All fireproof. All fireproof. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very uh, good. Well, that had to be a, a very panicky condition at that time it because was. everybody knows how them things go. Yeah. Oh my well, God. No, that the first man that was. Uh, trying to beat out the flames, he couldn't hit hard enough <laughs> until her uncle got a hold of that stick. Oh, your uncle? W would you have to know your, what your uncle's name was? It was Uncle William Stock. Uncle William Stock? Yeah. Okay, and he did the, he really thrashed the heck out of it, huh? Not at all. <laughs> okay, well, I, don't remember. I tell you, that man uh, saved a lot of things there, I'll tell you. Oh, yes. No. Okay. Uh, I'll never forget that. All right. Okay. And, uh, I, was sitting, I was sitting pretty close to where the, where the <laughs> trap was flying. <laughs> Any more questions? I have one more. Uh, as far as uh, your many duties, I know you were involved with the cemetery for many years. Were you involved with uh, being a trustee, an uh, elder, if that's what they have, or well, was, controlling people? I was a deacon at the time. You were a deacon, okay. Of course, that, uh, that didn't entail any... Uh, any preaching or anything like that is more or less uh, in the uh, uh, mechanics of running the church. Okay, okay. All right, very good. We, and uh, we collected the, collected the money. All right. At the, about that time when when I was on the board, they started getting nickels in the, the collection plates. Okay, started. Before they were as pennies. Oh, oh really? My no. dad was on the board for years. And if they had 50, 60 cents once on a Sunday. That was that was the donation. That was the donation. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that something, how times have changed there? Uh, yeah. Now, t today, today we have all silent collections. Yeah. Dollar bills. Doll <laughs> okay. <laughs> very good. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, I need your name, sir? Vernon again. Hi, Vern. Uh, Christmas Eve... All us kids had our peace to say, and I imagine that was very, very common in, yes. in that, at that time. And the uh, Christmas trees, like Carl said, 15 feet uh, tall, some of them I think even a little bit more. The candles were all on the outside, and there were three or four men that then had a pole with a candle on the end, and they went around and lit all the candles. And the first thing I remember about that, uh, I think I did, did that at the uh, uh, Centerville Settlement uh, uh, Christmas party. The reason I remember that is I was still young enough to sit on my mother's lap, and we had a song in German, Es wird so hell dort in der Luft. Why don't you sing it, Vern, like you did that night? <laughs> oh, that was very that nice. Was very nice, so why don't you sing it? Sure. Great. And uh, it, it, it's like it becomes so light in the heavens like at Christ's birth. And uh, this was before the tree was lit. And they would turn down the kerosene lamps on the side walls of the church so it was almost dark, and then they'd start to light that. And as you were singing the song, you could, it was almost like the light yes. uh, going more and more, which probably was like when Christ was born and the shepherds right. saw this light right. in the sky. Wonderful uh, idea, yes. Are you sure you don't want to sing it? I think yeah, you... I mean, it's so nice. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, it. I'll try it. But, give it a uh, try. We I appreciate may it. be a little flat or a little yeah, sharp or something like that. Uh, <laughs> and I may not remember all the words. Es wird so hell dort in der Luft und mitten in der Nacht. Es schwebt ein himmlisch hieser Duft herab zur Hirten Mal. Singet, lobet, singet all, das Erd und Himmel wieder schall. I'm stuck. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Very good. <laughs> I'm stuck. Same, same place here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Hosiana, 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 seinem Heiland der Welt. Sing it, lob it, sing it all. Das Erd und Himmel wieder schau. Hosianna, Hosianna, Hosianna sei dem Heiland der Welt. That's the only verse I know. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> wow. Good job. <laughs> I think Carl should have sang with them. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we did some video this uh, morning on uh, the 10th of April. Yeah. And uh, we had some questions. Go right ahead. Yes, this is Charlie Bauer. We had some... We had some questions on the Salem Ebenezer Church's school. And I stated on the video earlier that it was on the south side of C. And we have a... Uh, debate going on on the floor here they said no it was on the original site where the new church is now and i think we have that problem solved them them two intelligent people behind you will solve that problem right here. <laughs> okay <laughs> very good thank you okay question on the floor pertaining to that school can you give us some information there please yeah my memory of it and is, could i have your name please oh, vernon again thank yeah. you vernon. my memory of it is that uh, it was originally where Ch charlie was and I would say I possibly was five, six years old. They moved it to the location where the new church is now and put a basement underneath. Before that, there was no basement underneath. Okay, and the location at the beginning was south of Highway C? Yeah, south of Highway C. Okay, and on the corner there? Yeah, on oh, the corner. All right, and that now, had no basement? It had no basement there. No. Okay, continue please, I'm sorry. And. Uh, the reason I remember that was because when they moved the school, I remember the old foundation there. And that's why I know there was no, no uh, basement underneath it then. Okay. Of course, later on, when County Trunk C was widened, that took almost the whole area there <coughs> where the school was before because that was very close to the All ditch right. uh, next okay. to the road there. All right. Okay, now, as long as we're talking Highway C and the school, and you seem to have a, a grasp of that one, we saw a sign on one of the pictures that said Highway L to St. Nazians, and that was taken in 1936. Would you know if Highway C ever was Highway L? Anybody know that? I don't remember. If that was 1936. Yes. I graduated from high school in 1933, and I don't remember that okay. uh, as being anything but uh, Colony Trunk C. Colony Trunk C. Trunk C. But I don't know if it... Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That Highway 141, or the old hi State Highway 17, came from the south. Yes, it did. Yeah. And went east, right on that corner where the church was. Okay. So until... Highway uh, 141 was laid along the railroad track, that would not have been County Trunk C yet. Oh, okay. So it could very possibly from that corner to St. Nazian's might have been County Trunk L. Oh, okay. But I, I don't think they even had signs for the County Trunks on the 
I don't know. We, we just saw a sign and an actual picture taken yeah. in 1936, yeah. and it was a, it indicated Highway L to St. Asia. Yeah, that's very possible. Okay. Because in 1936, I was already working in Sheboygan. All right. So I, I have no memory of stuff in Newton at that time. All right. <laughs> and uh, Carl, anything from you on that uh, situation at all? No, I think Vernon is right. Okay. Very good. Well, thank you again. Okay, we've got a gentleman here who has a question. Go right ahead, please. I don't have a question. You don't I have, have a an, question. An have you, got, you got a name, though. Fred Jacoby. Yeah. Okay, Fred. <laughs> and I remember uh, the young people having the plays in the schoolhouse for many, many years, just like the young people at St. Wendell did and, and at the Cleveland Lutheran Church. And again, those plays in that, that little building that was standing room only. At the best, that was it was just jammed. I remember that. Wow, very good. Yeah, thank you. The gentleman here who can add to that information, go right ahead, please. Well, I'll go back to Vern. Vern, Vern. Yeah, Vern again. <laughs> yeah, I'll go back to New Year's Eve. All right. That was Sylvester Eve. Okay. And we had church service on, on New Year's Eve, and after that we went to the basement in the schoolhouse and. Uh, and just coffee clutch, you know, everybody visiting with each other. And before midnight, we'd have coffee, cake, and coffee. Okay. That, that was for as long as I can remember. I don't know when it, when it quit, okay. but that's what we had. But then, was it when uh, Reverend Clout was there that they started with those plays? Yeah. 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 Reverend Clark was Reverend, there? Reverend Clark was there, and he okay. got the youth group organized, and who it was that got us started, because I was in several of the plays myself then. Okay. And what were you called? You indicated a name that you were called? Christian Endeavor. Christian Endeavor. It was okay. a youth group. Okay. The ones that were, uh, I guess, confirmed. Mm -hmm. yeah, even Margaret and I went that course after we were married. Yeah. The, you, you could... You could join it? Join, uh, okay. join as long, or stay in it as long as you wanted to. Right. Was it a singing group or all kinds of activities? Or? We had uh, a, re a, a short service and things like that, and then we had a social after. Sure, social. sure. And that's how that got started with the, uh, with the plays. All right. And like he says, it got popular, and pretty soon they started, it was originally just for Sylvester Eve. Oh. And then other people heard about that and they wanted to come and uh, so they decided they'd have another night. Well, it got so crowded, I think eventually they had a two, three, four nights. Oh, so oh many my people uh, wanted to see that. Wow. Know. It was one of the few groups that, that put on something like that. Yeah. And it was these comedies, you know, or mm -hmm. uh, mistaken identities and things like that. And, uh, and what years was that, if I may ask? I would say it started in approximately 1930, 31, something okay. like that. So people... I think a little bit later. Because it, it had to be before 1933, because when I graduated from high school, then I... I did the depression, you had to go and find work somewhere and you couldn't find jobs. Okay. So All right. I ended up in Sheboygan. All right. Thank you, Reverend. Very good. Let's well, thank you very much. Okay, we're talking about the uh, Endeavor group, is that correct? Christian, Christian Endeavor. Christian Endeavor. Okay. Yeah. And you indicated that how many years it went? I don't know how many years it went, but I would say 20, 25 years. Really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That was up into the 40s and so forth also? From the start oh, yeah. In fact, a after I came back from World War II, that was in 45, I went to several of the plays yet after that. Okay, all right. So I would say at least to 1950 well, it was going. Very Maybe beyond that, but that I, I can't be sure of that. Okay. And now I'm going to ask the question, was that at St. John's or at the Salem? That was at Salem. At yeah. Salem. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Did you have your own Christian endeavor at 
your church? Yeah, for a little while. For a little yeah. while. Yeah. Okay. Never more. I'm never moaned too much. No. Okay. Very good. Well, thank you very much, folks. Okay, we had a great evening, and a lot of information has been transferred, but Kathy will give us a, a little conclusion effect, okay? I'm Kathy Sixel, and I want to thank everybody for the most interesting evening with all your information. It was absolutely great. And um, our next meeting will be May 8th, and it's going to be sort of a surprise. Charlie is going to be a presenter, Chris Connell, and Alan Pape, and they're going to be doing the architectural houses and so forth of Cleveland and in the area. So it should be quite nice. Um, and um, I'm Kathy Sixel. I live um, on Connie Truck X and I just had a birthday and I'm 69. 69. Very right. good, Kathy. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Young looking gal. Okay. And who do you have here, please? Charlie Bauer from Newton and I'm 61 and a day. And a day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Very good. And who do you have here, please? Dorothy Anderson from Down in Hiken, and I'm 88. 88. Congratulations, too. And who do you have here, please? I'm Marie Pippert. I've been 92. <laughs> 92. 92 already. <laughs> Way to go. Way to go. And who do you have here, please? I'm Fred Jacoby, and I'm 75 years old and two weeks. And two weeks. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. And who do you have here, please? I'm Willard Matthias, and I'm 79 years old. Oh, my goodness. Way to go, sir. Way to go. And who do you have here, please? I'm Alice Matthias. I'm checking you guys out. I'm two months and ten years older than Kathy. Two months and ten years older than Kathy. <laughs> okay. That's a mathematical problem. <laughs> and who do you have here, please? I'm Irene Knight from Cleveland. I'm 75. 75. Very good. Very good. That's a diamond uh, year, right? Is that what they would do? Mm -hmm. And who do you? Yeah, yeah. Eugene Moiser, and I'm 71. 71. Very good, Eugene. Thank you. And who do you have here, please? Melvin Yee, and I'm 76. 76. Okay, here we go. <laughs> and who do you have here, please? John Wiegand. I guess I'm the <coughs> youth group youth here. Group here? <laughs> I'm 55. 55. Oh, That's baby. young, baby. yes. <laughs> what a baby. <laughs> and who do you have here, please? Kathy Wagner from Cleveland, and I'm 76. Thank you, Kathy. Very good. And who do you have here, please? I'm Dolores Cress. I'm 82. 82. Very good. Very good. And who do you have here? I'm Walter Cress of Cleveland, and I'm 85. 85 already. Wow. Moving up there a little bit. Right. And who do you have here, please? I'm Margaret Stockmeyer. I'm 89. 89. Boy, you're looking good. Looking good. If your husband wasn't here, you know what I'd do. <laughs> oh! <laughs> well, he's bigger than I am. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Carl Stockmeyer, I'm 91 and 3 quarter. Really? Wonderful. Wonderful. Very good. Very good. And who do you have here, please? Vernon Wernicke. I was 89 on Christmas Day. Well, on Christmas Day. Very good. Best Christmas present my parents ever got. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not conceited. You're not, you're not conceited. No. <laughs> <laughs> and the videographer, Jerry O'Neill, I'm uh, presently 68, will be 69 on May 7th of this year. And uh, Kathy and I are usually battling it out a little bit with our ages here. <laughs> and I guess, Kathy, I'll let you indicate our next meeting again one more time. Oh, me is, or me is, right? And I hope I get the right time on the card. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'll try again. It'll be so 6.30 we'll, normally, right? 6.30 normally, right. Okay, so. very good. And okay, then, see you then, everybody. Okay, thank <laughs> you, Thank Kathy. you again.